Hi all, welcome to Show Studios video review series. Uh, we're going to be talking about Supriya Lele, uh, Spring Summer 20. Um, I'm Show Studio Fashion Editor Georgie Evans and I'm, this is fashion writer Del Trader. Thank Hi. you for joining me. Mm. Um, this is Shapira's first catwalk show, um, which is very exciting, got a bit of a buzz about it. She hasn't done a runway since her shows at Fashion East. Um, and normally Supriya shows are all slightly related to family or personal attributes. There's been collections that have nodded to her father's kind of um, old photography, collections that are hinting to um, her, uh, I think it was her father again, being a doctor. Um, and this collection was slightly um, more personal to her. Um, in the sense that it was more about herself um, and the cultural identity struggle she might be going through and also um, the photographer Sorab Hura, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly um, and we were looking at their photography earlier before coming on and um, it's very tender, very raw, very dark um, and quite emotive photography so this was definitely a signifier of what this collection was to have very dark um, collection for Supriya normally there's lots of pops of neon um, electric bright brights um, and in keeping with that um, kind of sari um, bright electric um, color palette but this was much darker she's put in the notes summer black um, and a lot sheerer as well um, for me there was a a real 90s vein throughout the collection. I know that's something that Supriya loves to reference and has really been inspired by, but she did study architecture and so that minimalism, I think, um, is where that stems from. So minimalism and architecture and then following through into 90s fashion. Um, so the opening look is a very 90s um, black leather coat, slightly cinched at the waist, um, with an exposed midriff. And that exposed midriff is something that continues throughout the collection, um, either with straps around it or a slight um, split in the skirts, either with a tie up the top so that the hip is almost accentuated on one side. Um, bralettes as well, which we've seen in previous collections, were back. Um, they're very, very small, but they're layered over a sheer kind of wrap, which is mirrored off of a sari silhouette. Um, those bralettes, um, again, are mirrored off saris, um, taking the darting that would have been in a sari um, and applying it to a bralette. And Supriya was saying backstage, they do make your boobs look great. I can't vouch, I haven't tried. Um, but um, Supriya says they're, they're given a really nice boob shape. Um, but also for me, I think they make the clothing slightly more wearable because there was so much sheer mm. um, throughout the collection that I like the idea that you can um, kind of adjust and buy Supriya as you see fit. A little bit of leather, a little bit of tie here, put a bralette over the top um, and it becomes slightly more decent. Um, but this was a really dark, um, quite emotive um, collection. Supriya backstage was in tears. Um, um, not because she was sad, because, <laughs> I'm assuming, um, but just really talking about um, the struggles of cultural identity, how you often feel um, pulled between two camps and can't necessarily relate or feel embedded um, with both identities that you draw from. Um, so looking less to the bright colours of saris and the glitz and glamour, but really, really taking that down to the skeleton um, of that item. So. Um, the checks and the sari prints were negative prints and were, uh, kind of appeared in cycling shorts underneath a very sheer trouser or a wide leg trouser. Likewise with the draping, um, was this, I can't, I don't actually know the fabrication, but it was very sheer, it almost like looked a like, yeah, almost looked like a tulle. Um, so a lot darker, I thought it was a very sexy show, um, kind of sexy and sombre, if those are two things that couldn't happen. Um, done through a 90s vein. It was very, very beautiful. Um, but I must say, I, I slightly preferred the Autumn Winter collection um, just because, I, just for wearability, I think. Um, because I think when, as soon as you start introducing um, shears and tiny little straps and tiny little bralettes, bralettes um, it does feel like a, a certain type of person can only really wear it. Um, and maybe that's just me being intimidated by um, how beautiful the casting was. Um, the jury's out on that one, but um, don't let me know what you thought. I think what's fascinating is that you've just mentioned, or it mentions in the notes, about this idea of having dual identities and dual heritages, terrible word, and how those two things meet um, and sit well together or not. And I wonder if Supriya's kind of referencing of that is being forced upon her by us and by her newfound um, fame, if you like, because I think it's something that it's one of those things that up until a certain point, if you are from anywhere in the world, you don't really realise until someone points it out. Yeah. And particularly yeah. being in the public eye with her work now, and I think her collections at the beginning being so heavily um, 
influenced by those um, different cultures, um, and in particular being British Indian, British Asian. Um, I wonder how much that has also, it's a conflict, you know, it's mm. actually how much does this hold me back and how much is this actually quite freeing and I wonder if we're almost, or the industry is forcing her to ask questions that maybe before, I think this is a wider topic about identity as well as that people are being forced to consider and discuss and engage and also define mm. their identities more than, more than we've ever done before. Um, and how that relates, I think what's interesting about her work and what I enjoy about it and what I enjoyed about this collection is that it is really kind of telling a different story from the kind of, um, I guess, National Geographic narrative of what other places are like. Mm. You know, we have a very, very set idea of what India looks like. And in some ways it's quite interesting that the invitation looks the way that it does because you're not really given that no. on the runway with the clothes. And I think that's very sensible. Um, and I think it's also what's fascinating when you're looking at a show is who gets the references. You know, did you did you spot? You know, some of those prints reminded me of '90s um, Bollywood films that I know she would have watched and I definitely watched growing up. So mm. there's that sort of and the colour palette in particular, those sorts of oranges and that sort of quite a lot of those bra those ruched bralettes, brassieres. A lot of that is coming from a very particular period in '90s um, Bollywood cinema that I can imagine, you know, backstage, I think she mentioned this idea of skeletons, the skeletons of garments, the skeletons of, of I guess, ethnographic clothes, mm. things like saris and things like, you know, um, shalwar kameezes that she's kind of giving us, but actually stripping away some of that, I guess, that heaviness that comes with um, saying that this is from here. She's kind of stripping it away. That's what she was saying backstage actually, um, is that she's, she was saying, why can't that be nuanced? Why can't we have a nuanced version of what yeah. you think India should be? Yeah. Um, well, even her referencing of Saurabh's work, I mean, I think Saurabh's work, if you look at it, is very much not what one would assume with photography, contemporary Indian photography. And there's a lot of great contemporary Indian photography that is starting to really gain, gain traction and more people are looking at it now thanks to Instagram and, and also mm. people looking for photography from other parts of the world. But it's a sort of hard flash, you know, lens and youth culture that you would have expected from, you know, German photography again in the 90s. And you're getting that in India right now. And I think obviously it's telling a completely different story. And I think there's some really inspirational pictures that if you look at Saurabh's work, that you can totally see what Supriya's getting from it. And it mm -hmm. does have that hardness. I think she was, or has talked about listening to kind of heavy metal as a teen. Um, and I think that is, that, I guess, it jars with what we imagine, you know, life as an Indian life is like. <laughs> and yeah. that's what's quite exciting about this, is that it was super hard and it was an apologetic in any way, even though it was quite there was a femininity there with yeah. the ruffles and the sheerness and I'm guessing that a lot of that will be translated into um, less sheer fabrics um, for commercial purposes but generally I thought it had it had this rigour to it yeah. that you wouldn't normally assume with a collection that has these references yeah absolutely and I do think even though it even though it feels like it's coming from quite a dark place there was a real strength to it yes yeah. yeah, it was super strong. Super strong. Super strong. Let's end there, shall we? <laughs> um, thank you very much for coming in the car with me, Dal. That's you're lovely. You're welcome. Um, please do like, comment, subscribe if you're watching through YouTube. Um, let us know what you thought, if you agree, if you can relate. Um, and please do visit Show Studio. There you can see uh, all the wonderful catwalk images and um, our review alongside it. We'll see you very soon. Bye.